Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric system. We have sine x cosine y equals 1 fourth and sine y cosine x equals 3 fourths. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. I'm going to be showing you the solution method and then we're going to be making a table and also looking at a graph at the end. So now this video was made in collaboration with Dr. PK, who is a great mathematician. He's got a great YouTube channel. Make sure to check it out. I'll share the links down below. If you're looking for really challenging math problems, then you can definitely check out his channel. All right, great. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, since my colleague, Dr. PK, is going to present the second method, I'll be presenting the first method. So I'll start with the first method and end with the first method. Okay, great. So for our first method, let me rewrite the equations. Sine x cosine y equals one fourth and sine y cosine x, of course, they are multiplied, equals three fourths. Now for the first method, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to add these equations up. And the reason for that is when you add these two equations, you get an identity. What is that identity? If you study trigonometry, you must know this. This is the sum formula. In other words, this is equivalent to sine x plus y. Okay? So I'm adding one fourth and three fourths. That makes four fourths or one. So sine x plus y equals one from here. Great. So let's go ahead and do something similar so that we can get another equation. Uh, which we can take advantage of an identity, and that will be the subtraction. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract, and since I want to keep the result positive, I'm going to subtract this way. So sine y cosine x minus sine x, oopsies, sorry, it's just messed up, sine x cosine y equals sine of y minus x, now, it, with sine, it matters because there's a minus sign. You have to make sure that you take the uh, first angle first. Make sense? And if you subtract 3 fourths minus 1 fourth, you're going to get 1 half, which is the same as 2 fourths, right? So we got two equations that are really, really awesome. We can go ahead and manipulate them, right? How? Well, this basically gives us the x plus, uh, possible x plus y and y minus x values. So we can come up with systems. So let's go ahead and write those systems down. So the first one gives me x plus y equals pi over 2. As you know, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And on the unit circle, if you think about it, that's the only angle between 0 and 2 pi whose sine is equal to 1. Okay, so that's a very special angle. Plus... I'm going to be adding, obviously, multiples of 2 pi to this, right? So we can go ahead and add 2 and pi, where n is an integer, okay? So that is for x plus y. Let's go ahead and do something similar for y minus x, and then we're going to solve this as a system. The sine of which angle is 1 half? If you think about that question, you're going to notice that that is actually 30 degrees, or you can write it in radians as pi over 6, right? And then, obviously, it doesn't have to be the same integer, so we're just going to add 2k pi to this. So this gives us a nice system, which we can solve by elimination. And then, obviously, there's another system which we can work with. But something interesting about this problem that, well, I'll tell you later, because it's very interesting. Anyways, so let's go ahead and solve this system by addition. And x is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 2y equals 3 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 4 pi over 6. I can definitely write it as 2 pi over 3. And then plus 2 times n plus k pi. Obviously, n plus k is another integer, but you have to be careful because n plus k depends on the choice of n and k. And when we do the x, you're going to notice um, they're actually somewhat dependent. Anyways, uh, 2 pi over 3, and then if you divide both sides by... 2, you're going to get pi over 3, and that is going to be plus n plus k times pi. So that gave us the y value. We can go ahead and subtract and get the x value. If you subtract them, you're going to get 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 6. That's going to give you 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. And then if you cut that in half, you're going to get pi over 6. 
but you're going to get the difference of n minus k multiplied by pi. So n plus k and n minus k are both odd or both even because of parity. Uh, so you have to be careful if you're adding an even multiple of pi, uh, you have to do it for both. So that's kind of interesting. I find it interesting. So that gives us a pair. Uh, and definitely uh, playing with the n and k values, we can write a bunch of solutions. Uh, that, for example, uh, for n and k are equal to zero, then we get the trivial solutions pi over six comma pi over three. When I show you the graph, you'll see that it's one of the points. And the graph is actually pretty interesting. Okay, so anyways, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the second option. So obviously x plus y is going to be unchanged because there's only one angle, uh, which is pi over 2. And then I'm just going to use the n again. And with the y minus x though, we said that, okay, uh, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, but you got to remember pi over 6 is like 30 degrees. By the way, there are two angles, first and second quadrant, whose sine is the same. And the other one is just going to be found by subtracting pi over 6 from pi, which is 5 pi over 6. So this is going to be the other option. Uh, let's use k again. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add these up. X cancels out. 2y equals 3 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, which is 4 pi over 3, plus 2 times n plus k pi. And then by division, both sides by 2, you're going to get 2 pi over 3 plus n plus k pi. So something interesting about this system is that Let's find the x value first and then we'll briefly talk about it. So when we subtract them, we're going to get 3 pi over 6 uh, minus 5 pi over 6. That's going to be like negative 2 pi over 6, which is negative pi over 3, right? And uh, negative pi over 3, basically, you can you have to turn it into a positive before you divide by 2 because you can't just divide a negative angle by 2 because it just means this plus 2 pi. So that's going to be 5 pi over 3 and half of that was, will be 5 pi over 6, all right? Great. So there's something interesting about this. Uh, some solutions will not work. We get some extraneous solutions because we have to make sure that our both of these systems work. Even though there's some and difference may work fine, we have to be careful uh, when uh, the individual equations are satisfied. Okay, that's why I wanted to show you a table real quick and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the graph. So. Uh, this table is actually helpful. For example, we know that the product of these two things is one fourth. So we can basically say, hey, how about uh, one half and one half? Okay, that is going to work. And then these two can be root three over two and root three over two. And then we can go with negative one half and negative one half. Again, the product is the same and still hold on to the positive values for these. And then we can do one half, one half with negative values on the square root of three over twos. And then we can do the negatives with negatives like everything is going to be negative. So those are the options. And then obviously from here you can tell that x and y are both in the first quadrant and that's going to give you the pi over uh, 6 and pi over 3 and so on and so forth. You can figure out the rest pretty much the same way in different quadrants. So we have to make sure both of these equations work, otherwise we're going to run into some issues. And let me go ahead and show you the graph and we'll just finish up. And I just want to say thank you, Dr. PK, for the opportunity to collaborate on this problem. I really enjoyed solving this and I'm sure my viewers and my audience will also love uh, seeing the second solution on your channel, make sure to check out Dr. PK's channel. I'll share the links down below. So here's the graph. It's very interesting. I didn't know that it was going to look like this before I did, but here you go. You see some points. Uh, there are uh, solutions, and obviously there are infinitely many solutions if you look at it, but you can kind of tell where the solutions are, uh, appear. Uh, one thing that's interesting about it, and I don't know why, but the, the green graph... Uh, I think that's a green, not, not a blue. <laughs> okay, the this graph is it looks like a circle, but this one doesn't. I don't know why. If you know the answer, please comment down below. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. It's probably going to be in an hour, and then a third video in another hour. Uh, until then, um, check out the uh, Dr. PK's video. I'm going to share the link to his video as well. And be safe, take care, and bye-bye.